This is a homemade powerful smoke machine that I've made using some simple parts. With a short push of a button it can create enough smoke to fill my workshop in seconds. Unfortunately I can't test it outside, but I can assure you it is very powerful. The circuit is very simple and you will see it in a moment, but please be careful. This project will work at high voltage from the main outlet, so if you are not sure in any moment please don't start such a project. All is made around this glycerin liquid or so called fog juice, and this at a certain temperature will pass from liquid to smoke, and this is more or less odorless and non toxic. So all I had to make was the heating components and the pump. This is a very cheap project to make and could be useful if you need a smoke machine. So guys let's see how to make it. Make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell and if you consider supporting this kind of projects check my Patreon page. So let's get started. This episode is sponsored by the PCB manufacturer company GLC PCB. Their main services are the 2 layer PCBs for only $2. Also 4 and 6 layer PCBs, the SMT assembly process where you will get the PCBs with all the components already soldered in place and also the SMT stencil for soldering SMT components with solder paste. The quality of the PCBs is amazing, I use their services all the time and always get good results. For only $2 you have 5 PCBs of any color that you want. So go to glcpcb.com, upload the Gerbil files of your design and order the PCBs in just a couple of minutes. What's up my friends, welcome back. Before we start, please make sure you never touch the high voltage. This project uses 220 volts directly from the mains outlet, so please be careful and if you are not sure, don't start this project. Also make sure that you use proper tools and disconnect the power whenever you are working inside of the case. Ok so let's see the part list we need for this project. I would like to say you could find pretty much the same parts inside of an old expressor machine that I don't use anymore so just in case consider that as well. Later we'll take a look inside one and see what we have and if we could use those parts. Ok so we need this smoke fluid, which is the most important part for this project. At a certain temperature this will turn into dense smoke and this is not dangerous if you breathe it. They use the same liquid in discos parties and other activities. You have a link for all the parts for this project below this video. To push the liquid out we need a pump. Since the entire system will work with power directly from my home outlet, I've ordered a 220 volts electric pump like this one. If you live in US, please make sure that you buy all the parts for this project for 120 volts. This pump already has a connector for the copper tube that we will use. So we need this type of flexible copper tube of 4mm diameter. For just a few dollars I bought 2 meters of this. To control the temperature we could use an Arduino with a thermocouple and a relay to enable or disable the power. But a better and simple solution is to use directly a thermocouple switch like this one. This will stop the current flow at 160 degrees which is ok for this project. It can handle 220 volts and 10 amps, which is more than enough. The maximum power we need for the thermocouple is given by the heater. In my case I will use this water heater that works at 220 volts and will use a maximum of 5 amps, so 10 amps thermocouple is more than enough. As for the main input I've also bought this plug. This already has a built in fuse and an on and off switch, so that's great. To enable the smoke we also need a button. This is a momentary push button made for 220 volts. It must be a high voltage button because otherwise we could damage it. As an extra this push button already has a light inside. Ok so we also need a tin can like this one. I have the Fabada Asturiana, 100% natural. But any other brand could work, but make sure it's made out of metal, so it could handle high temperatures. I first wanted to use some old paint spray cans, but these are too small for the heater to fit inside. Depending on your heater that you use, you might find smaller ones. To keep the temperature inside I will use some cement. It's better to use ceramic, but I didn't find that to buy, so for this project I will use this cement. Ceramic will be better to keep the temperature inside and not crack at high temperatures, 
An even better solution is to fill the can with melted aluminum. Anyway, make sure that you also order some thermoresistant foam like this one here. I will place this inside of the case of the smoke machine. As for the small parts, we also need some shrinking tube insulators, wires to make the connections, two diodes, an LED and a 33K resistor to make the temperature indicator. We might need some screws as well and other small parts. As for the case, it would be better to make it out of metal. But using a metal case, make sure that you add a ground connection and that everything inside is well insulated. All metal shops were closed these days, so I'll make my case out of wood. The hot parts will be inside of the metal can and filled with cement, so we will have a good thermal protection. The electronics will be well insulated as well, so using a plastic or a wood case should be the same, but I still recommend you to use a metal case. I will also add some heat resistant foam all around inside of the case for more insulation. Ok, so let's start making this smoke machine. First we need to make the heated block. For that we get the heater and the copper tube first. Now try passing a few loops around the heater, so the liquid will have time to heat up. I've used some small metal wire to tie the copper tube to the heater. Make sure that you leave a part of the tube at the output and another part at the input in order to make the connections. Now make a hole at the bottom of the tin can more or less where the copper tube should exit and test if the heater will fit inside. Now I make another hole on the side of the tin can. This hole will be a little bit bigger, so I can fit the thermocouple here. So I place the thermocouple here on this hole. Now fit the heater with the copper tube inside of the can. Now prepare the cement or the ceramic, or even better, if you are able to melt some aluminum, that will be the best solution for keeping the temperature in. Now fill the can with the cement and let it dry overnight and we will keep going with this project once the heated block is ready. Ok guys, the next day the block was dry and hard, so we can keep going with this project. I've also heated a little bit the block and there is still water inside because we can see some vapor coming out. So if you are using cement, make sure that you leave it more than one day. Anyway, I get a piece of hardwood and measure where to place each component. Also leave some space for the liquid container. We will later need some plastic tube for getting the liquid out of the bottle to the pump. For that I found this aquarium tube that also has a small valve so we can also regulate the flow. Once measured I cut the wood to size and I also cut two more for the sides of the case. I mark the holes for the screws. So once I have the wood, I cut a piece of heat resistant wool and place it over the wood. Once I drill the holes, I use some of these thumb tacks and fix the wool on the bottom plate. After that I screw in place the water pump using two screws from below. I also screw in place these metal hooks, so later I'll place the heater block here. Then I go and add the sides of the case. I add 3 screws for this side and 3 more for the other. Now I add another piece of plywood on the back with glue and nails. In this part I'll make a hole for the main input plug with the switch. At this point I start soldering wires for all the connections as in the schematic. To the thermocouple, to the water pump, from the main input and so on. Make sure that you use a lot of shrinking tubes for insulation. I also add this LED with a resistor and the diodes. And this will show us when the heater block is still heating or not. I then add the insulation over the sides of the case as well. I tied some metal wires to those hooks before for securing in place the heated block. Then I add the metal can and tight it with the metal wires till it's well fixed in place. I pass all the wires to the back of the case. Over the thermocouple I've also played some resin, so it will be more insulated. I place some glue on the front part. Then I add the front part wood plate and nail it as well. We have to make a hole for the smoke tube output. Inside of the case I pass all the wires to the back and we find a good position for the liquid bottle. I solder all the wires to the main input, the LED and the wires that will go to the remote control button. Add shrinking tubes for insulation. I make a nut on the wire and pass this remote wire to the back of the case. Then I glue in place the LED indicator on the smaller wood part that will go on top. 
Now I can close the back top plate with some nails and glue. Finally, I fill the entire front part of the case with more insulation foam, to keep the heat only there. Now I connect the remote wires to the push button inside of this wood case here. With this button we will control the pump. Before I close the case, I give it a test. I plug the main cord and press the push button. The pump starts. And at the same time, the LED will turn on, so the block starts heating up. This LED will turn off when the block is fully heated up. I insert the tube from the pump into the bottle and press the remote button and there you go. We are under quarantine so I had to test this inside. And this was a bad idea. With less than a second of pushing the button, my workshop filled with smoke. We'll make more tests later in the video. Ok, so now I can close the case. So I add the final top part using some screws. The smoke machine is ready. It's time to give it a better look. I cover all the parts and then I give it a coat of black paint. Now we have to let it dry for a few hours and then we'll see the final test. But till then let's open the espresso machine and see what components we could savage for this project and if they would work or not. I can already see that I could use the power cable. And on the front we can also see some push buttons and the temperature gauge will give this machine a cooler look. So I take a few screws and let's open it. Let's see what we have inside. I can see a pressure water pump which could be used for the smoke machine. Inside this aluminum block we have the heater and I can also see a few thermocouples but these are rated for 100 degrees. So this won't work with our project. We need a little bit more temperature. But luckily these thermocouples are just a few cents. So what we can use? We have the temperature gauge. The water pump is great and also has some vibration dampers so it will be more silent and it also works at 220 volts. We have some push buttons the thermocouples and the fuse. The power cable, but unfortunately, we can't use the heater. This type of heater is inside of the aluminum block, so we can't use it. But anyway, at least we could use the water pump and the plastic tubes. I will try to add the temperature gauge to my smoke machine. And by the way, let's take another look at the final results of this project. And as you can see, I've placed the temperature gauge as well. I've made it all black and glued some stickers. This one here is the heating indicator. This LED will turn off when the heating process stops. Let's power it up and test it. I will do this inside because we can go out. So let's see. As you can see, the amount of smoke this machine makes is amazing. But after some tests, I think we should place a 200 degrees thermocouple, instead of the 160 degrees. With less than a second of pushing the button, I can fill the entire room with smoke. It works better than expected. Now we could make a party, but no, we are under quarantine. So guys, for just a few dollars, we could make this. The heater cost me 4.5. The thermocouples are just $1, the water pump was $7 and the copper tube was around $3 and everything is from eBay. The push button, the wires and the small components, a few more dollars. The smoke liquid was a bit more expensive, around $18 and 10 more dollars for a lot of ceramic fiber insulation. The wood in my case was for free, because I used wood parts from old furniture that I wanted to throw out. So guys, I hope that you like this project and maybe build one yourself. If so, give a like to this video and consider subscribing and activating the notification bell. If my work is helping you, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks again and see you later guys.